to some news. My name is Mike B. A.K.A. Phony. Today's date is October 18th, 2022. I am joined today by my dearest chat, the opinion giver. Thank you so much for joining me, my co-hosts here today. We were talking about my mom right before the stream. <clears throat> and all moms, all moms, dearest, dearest, all mother dearest, the, the, the birth givers, whatnot. Uh, yeah, some opinions, do it. Yes, yes. All right, so. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a busy weekend. Uh, again, again, again. I, it's almost like I'm doing news on the wrong days. I am doing the news on the wrong day. This week, again. Like last week it was on a Monday or something. This week it's on a Tuesday. I don't know if we'll ever make it to Friday before we have to do a news early in the week. <laughs> Bi-weekly news. I know. I don't understand how we went from like, I was doing news every two weeks, sometimes three, and it was just like, oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just not really, eh, it's not really a lot to talk about, whatever. And then all of a sudden, like, everything starts happening. And it, it, I don't, is it, is it happening? Or are we just paying attention to more stuff? I don't know. I just feel like everyone's losing their fucking shit. Everyone's losing their shit. It's worth, worse than uh, uh, when everyone was quarantined and everything, doing dumb shit on the internet. <clears throat> so, first up, let's go ahead and do some uh, check-ins with some previous, uh, or some previous um, uh, 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 news stories that we'd covered. Uh, first up, uh, if you guys uh, need a quick refresher, uh, um, uh, streamer slash uh, actress Adriana Chechik at TwitchCon a couple weeks ago ended up jumping into a. I'm sure most everyone's heard about this because you did not. Um, there was an event going on sponsored by Lenovo, uh, and it had a bunch of foam on the ground, and you pugil stick, boop, 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 knock somebody off. They fall into the foam pit. Everybody's like, ah, what a great time, right? Well, Adriana, like everybody else, jumped off. She took a little bit higher, did the splits, tried to land in the thing, ended up hitting concrete because there was nothing underneath like one or two stacks of foam. The bone breaker pit. Yeah, exactly. So anyways, she has gone through a number of surgeries already. She's got um, she's got uh, some fusions going on with a couple of her uh, with a couple of like plates in her spine or some shit. Um, but I mean, like, you know, she's she's definitely keeping a uh, a good sense of humor about the whole ordeal. <laughs> this is from her page. <laughs> <laughs> this is her tweet, okay? Just before we go anywhere, okay? <laughs> but she, she's keeping, she's keeping a pretty positive outlook on this. You know, she's saying that, uh, yeah, I laugh at this, but it hurts so much. Uh, it hurts so much. Uh, so, yeah, she's, she's definitely in a fucking ton of pain. Um, I, you know, I was going through her feed, just checking out to see like what her updates were. She was posting some stuff. Um, here's her trying to walk. Uh, this was, uh, this was like a week ago, almost now, five days ago. Um, just struggling to take steps. Um, it's obviously been a huge, huge, huge ordeal. And it's just only been less than a week, right? A week since the event. Uh, I said, I took five minutes walk. I took a fucking five minutes walk today. Now I sleep the rest of the day, but I fucking got normal clothes on or put on me and I walked. So yeah, she's she's trying to keep, like I said, she's trying to keep a positive outlook um, at this whole thing. Uh, she says, uh, what was another one? So yeah, she says, who else has had back surgery? Why do I get an instant migraine when sitting up or walking even brace? Is it the pain or what? I can only uh, stay laying down to not feel like my head's gonna explode. This, you know, this is something that actually I'm I'm relatively familiar about uh, with, um, <clears throat> which happens whenever you lose spinal fluid. Uh, I learned about this when uh, Jen got, uh, she had an epidural done. And they fucked it up or something, and um and she and she ended up like losing a little bit of spinal fluid or something. It was like a leak that was happening, and so uh, I wouldn't be surprised. And what happens is the uh, the spinal fluid will slowly start to like deplete, and then your brain would actually start to like rest on your skull. It would stop floating and start to rest like on parts of your skull, and then your brain's gonna be like, ow, right? And so, <laughs> so um. Yeah, so like this is something that kind of fits that, you know, but it's it's just it makes sense given her injury that she probably would have lost a little bit of spinal fluid or something. And so hopefully I mean, it's just one of one example of like a million things that she's dealing with right now on a day to day on a literal daily basis, trying to get back to being, you know, 100 percent. But like I said, at least she's got a pretty good um, <clears throat> attitude about it. I mean, what else are you going to do? You know, what else are you going to fucking do? It's. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Time to go to the shop, buy some extra brain fluids. Yeah, had a spinal tap. It was an issue. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 
Brain fluid leaking out. Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I didn't. I didn't know that. Your spinal fluid leaks out in your brain. Is it? That's the. Your brain is like it's the same fluid, I guess. Gotta laugh to keep from crying. And I'm sure there's a lot of crying going on in the back end. Like, I'm sure there is. Um, so not sure why she jumped off like that when she knew it was like three inches of foam. Well, I mean, like, I don't I, I think that it was probably just thought that it would be okay because everybody was doing it, you know? And I understand it's probably not a good excuse, but when they're encouraging you to jump off and everybody's jumping off and having a good time and you do the same thing. Like yeah, they were in a fault for sure. They was not that was that was not a foam pit in a traditional sense. <clears throat> trust yeah, trust in the organizers. Yeah, exactly. You trust you trusted that somebody would have thought, hey, people are going to be jumping in this thing for sure. Maybe we should make it safe. Um, but yeah, it's definitely yeah safety issue. These guys are pros. They made the safe right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, furthermore, gambling. Uh, the gambling update went in. This was uh, Twitch's. This was the Twitch said that they were going to update on the 18th, I guess. And today was a day. As such, starting October 18th, we are further tightening our rules to also prohibit any streaming of, of listed sites that contain slots, roulette, dice games, or any unlicensed and are unlicensed in the U.S. or other jurisdictions. Uh, the offer consumer protections like deposit limits, waiting periods, age verification systems. This updated policy applies to all global community members and covers all domain extensions of these sites, including free social versions. Linking to these sites. Uh, in chat is also prohibited. So as you can see, they are pretty much taking a stance against any, uh, almost any form of, um, uh, of of virtual online gambling, unless they have some kind of, I guess, some kind of license in the U.S. And in the U.S. is just more, you know, I mean, it depends on where you have a license uh, and if that license is available for online use. Um, there's definitely a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of like a Native American, you know, sponsored or like a, a built Casinos, of course, but also online casinos. So I'm sure that th those are probably still accessible. But I mean, it seems to me like if you stream anything related to gambling, you're probably going to get shit on by uh, by toss. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, the kind of you want to. Well, Mike, it ban if we link it here. Unless it's sports betting. Yeah, I guess it's less of sports betting. Uh, and speaking of, <clears throat> excuse me, speaking of. Uh, our last update here for a prior story. Uh, this was uh, uh, this was Ludwig. He says that they paid back everybody. Uh, this was related to Sliker, and they've replaced. They're probably not necessarily everyone. I'm sure someone out there is like, "Hey, I never got my you know whatever hundred dollars or whatever." But they did pay out an, a, a total amount of two hundred and forty-two thousand nine hundred fifty-six dollars. This is with Sliker. Sliker was the one who uh, basically begged, borrowed uh, money from a whole bunch of people, uh, content creators, in order to support his gambling habit, uh, and he ended up losing it all on, or something. Thing. But um, but anyways, yeah. So he's still close to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now it's time to do your job, Twitch, and ban him. So they they did all that. I don't know. Is he she? Is he still streaming? I I don't really know if he's still a streamer. Actually, now think about it. Is he Twitch? Let's see. <clears throat> no, I mean, wait. Is this the same guy? No, this is not the same guy. This is somebody else. Uh, I don't know what his actual thing is, but still. Uh, Slicker, not Slicker. I was just reading out how it says Slicker. Well, not that one, but uh, I'm shocked that he hasn't gotten banned. Scamming people on the platform sounds kind of bad. It sounds kind of bad. You would think. You would think that that'd be enough, uh, especially when you're uh, when you're you know stealing money from some of your other top creators. <laughs> you think? Um, <clears throat> let me say they wet everyone and make sure people didn't try to scam them. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm sure. I'm sure that's what he said. <laughs> I'm sure nobody would have, you know, would have tried to steal some money from that from that pot, you know. Are uh, really gonna talk about Twitch's ban policies? <laughs> nah. <laughs> so <clears throat> our first our first big story of the day here. This is something that's still kind of ongoing here. I mean, there's a couple of them. It's uh, oh, there it is. So he's still there then, right? Let me see. Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, you know. So, I mean, he hasn't streamed or anything like that, but, yeah, maybe he learned his lesson. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I guess it's easy for, um, oh, no, never mind. I was going to say, like, a little, little, little bit of the stream on Twitch. Like, yeah, 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 go ahead and ban all the Twitch streamers. Um, <laughs> Twitch is okay with gambling for so long, so what's a little fraud to the tune of $250,000? Yeah, so next up, Bayonetta voice actor. This is uh, uh, Helena Taylor. She... Put out a video, a couple of videos, a series of videos here. Let me see if I can pull up one of them. I'm not going to play the whole thing for you. I'm just going to do my best to summarize if I can. Uh, but she put out a series of videos. So Bayonetta 3 is slated to be released at, at some point here. Um, and the main character previously was voiced by this young lady here. And she has come out and put out a couple videos basically describing her experience with uh, Platinum Games trying to get, um, uh, trying to get paid. 
right? Uh, she goes on. I'll play a little bit of this for you so you can so see you get a gist. You get the gist here. Let me go ahead and turn off this other. Uh, I saw the music playing over here because I'm a fucking noob. There you go. Turn this up. Hello, my name is Helena Taylor, and I am the voice of Bayonetta. And I would like to explain to you why I didn't voice Bayonetta three. The Bayonetta franchise made an approximated four hundred and fifty million dollars. That's not including merchandise. As an actor, I trained for a total of seven and a half years. Three years at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, Lambda, with voice coach Barbara Barkery, and four and a half years with the legendary Larry Moss. In so she goes on to describe her credentials and then to describe the amount of money that she was offered. Her her statement on this, and I know some of you guys already know the follow-ups to this. We're going to get to it, okay? Her statements on this in terms of how much money she was offered was $4,000 for the role. Like, for the role of the main character in this series, in this game. Um, <clears throat> and that's, you know, pretty... That's pretty fucking low. It seems, I mean, pretty fucking low for a game. And she says makes $450 million. So she's obviously very, very distraught over this. And she, and the game's already been, the recording's already done. All this stuff's basically done. She waited until now to, to put it out because she wanted to, to try to get the most. And maybe she's been stewing over this, right? She's trying to get the most attention to this. Um, but yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw the follow-up. Yeah. Uh, so she says in a second video, she says, I'm not afraid of the NDA. I can't even afford to run a car. Uh, she calls for fans to boycott the game. She said that she already auditioned and passed. Then the offer, and then the offer came. Uh, in the third video, she says, uh, and this is a quote talking about, um, uh, Hideki Hideki uh, Kamiya, who is like the second in command at Platinum Games, uh, says that he value he greatly he values greatly the contribution to the game. The memory of meeting her as Bayonetta was a memory that sh that he'll always hold dear. This was in the response email to her, basically saying that she doesn't get the job, uh, but also we only want to offer like four thousand dollars. So it was pretty it was pretty small amount, and so she felt like that's that's not an, I mean considering. You know what she does and you know her um her uh, i guess her tenure in this in the industry and everything like she feels like she's deserving of more um now in some of the in some of the videos in some parts of the videos she definitely seems to kind of go a little a little over the top with some of her almost like demands that we that we don't support the game and everything boycott the game don't if you're going to buy the game instead donate the money to charity and everything um and she says that uh she did mention kind of loosely jennifer hale who's a person who is voicing bayonetta in bayonetta 3 um but she doesn't necessarily come out and say you know she just basically says that, so I that thought, you know what I'm going to write to Hideki Kamiya. No, we already covered that part. Uh, <clears throat> but she did. She did say that that character is not hers. Um, that character belongs to uh, Helena, uh, but it does not belong to like Jennifer. So like Jennifer is just like you know you don't you don't get to like sign our autograph and everything. Like she feels a very emotional and you know fiscal attachment to uh, uh, to this character, and she doesn't feel like anybody else is deserved of taking that character and making it their own by signing autographs and all that. So uh, you know this came this was a discussion that we had pretty heavily here in Discord, and we were going through. And grabbing up some files, trying to see if we could figure out like how much is a voice actor supposed to make. So this is SAG, a uh, SAG is the Screen Actors Guild, uh, which is uh, I think is primarily a U.S. thing. Um, and it says here for a day perform up to three voices, four hour a day. So four hour day. Uh, it says nine hundred and two dollars to nine hundred fifty six dollars. Um, <clears throat> sort of Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> I think the OG Japanese VA might have something to say about Taylor. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, she is feels entitled that it's her character or what it yeah yeah and you know i mean i feel like she's being very frank with us like this is like if johnny depp uh was replaced as uh captain jack sparrow right like if he came out and was like that character doesn't belong to you like that belongs to me i think a lot of people would be like yeah it, it kind of does even before he would have said anything everyone would have said that right like you don't want to recast the chala from uh uh from black panther right it's like it's just something that you just don't do. Don't recast them. It belongs to that person, that person only. So this is somebody who, um, who is obviously, like I said, she's very passionate. She feels very connected to it, and she feels like it is hers, right? Uh, Paul Rudd, Captain Jack Sparrow. No, uh, nine hundred dollars for a four-hour workday. Yes, yeah. Well, this is like act actors' prices and everything. So, so 
judging by this four hours 900 right x number of sessions like you know she says the four thousand dollars is still not is not uh, uh equitable so she wants to um uh she says that she should she's deserve it of more we also found we also found um this equity dot uh, org link which goes over yeah first ever grins for voice artists engaged in video game recordings so this is a little bit more specific to like it says artists who record things for video games. Uh, and it says with a minimum minimum of 300 pounds per hour paid to voice artists when recording for a standard game, which is a budget of over 5 million, 200 pounds per hour for an indie game, which is a half a mil to 5 million, and 175 pounds per hour for a micro game, which is under 0.5 million pounds. Um, Bayonetta 2 was three sessions for reference. There you go. Um, <clears throat> Chris Pratt, Captain Jack, Fuck, dude. I'll I'll burn Disney down for that shit. <laughs> Is that Mike over there with the fucking torch? What's he doing? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, this is a standard that was developed uh, in the UK for this. So. And, you know, her 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 stance on four thousand dollars for the entirety of the project still seems pretty low. It still seems pretty low. Right. But not like an egregious amount, not like not like, you know, pennies on the dollar. It just seems like it's a little low considering how many sessions she would need and all that. Um, wasn't Bayonetta the only VA work that she's ever done? I'm not sure about that, but I know she's in theater. I know she does theater work. So, um, uh, so that's, you know, theater work requires a pretty good voice. So obviously she's had a lot of voice training. Uh, the fact that Jennifer Hale took the role, who has been very outspoken about fair pay, makes this whole thing seem petty. It does start to seem that way. I did find this art. I didn't find this article. Kite actually uh, in Discord linked this to me this morning. Uh, and I thank you very much for that, by the way. It says the current discussion around the proposed payment for voice actress Helen Taylor for working at Bayonetta 3 in the West has given me an idea to provide an overview of the salary situation in Japan's game industry. Uh, so in Japan... It says that, and this is as of 2020, so these numbers could have changed, but there's a caveat. So it says that uh, for game producers, directors, engineers, artists, designers, testers, debuggers, everything kind of ranges around 45,000 US dollars. We'll use that for now. So 45, 40, 38, 38, 37, 30. So everything kind of like kind of revolves around a 37,000, 38,000 dollar price point uh, for uh, this is for their annual, right? Annual salary. So if you break that down now into a handful of sessions, now that now it suddenly seems like a whole lot less. But we're talking about like actors and actresses here, right? Um, <clears throat> and so uh, this this note is pretty important. That 5.5 million yen currently translates to just thirty seven thousand dollars. But note that the yen has been falling like a rock this year. And this article pulls up is very telling. It says that the yen falls to a twenty four year low. Uh, so so going back to the uh, uh, the response here, think, thinking about this collection of of price points of like, how are we supposed to pay these people? It sounds it sounds to me and we're going to get into like more information here. Uh, it sounds to me like there might be kind of like an economic like mismatch or something like maybe on one hand in Japan, this is a good price. This is a good VO price, right, for a voice actress. Uh, but that doesn't quite translate well in the UK. Uh, I know that everybody's got economic like issues right now. The U.S. has one. Gas is as gas here is expensive as it was in the U.K. like four years ago, which is super high. I don't know what the U.K. is at right now. It's probably like liquid fucking gold. Uh, but everybody's economy has pretty much been shit. So maybe, maybe Japan's economy is a little bit more shit. So that four thousand dollars, you know, whatever, seems like maybe that was an adequate price. Now. Now, EU electric prices, fuck. Oh, yeah. Jeez. So we did get a response from Jennifer Hale. It's about as loose. It's about it's about as neutral as you would expect a former shepherd to get. Right. She says uh, in a long as a longtime member of the voice actor community, I support every actor's right to be paid well and have advocated consistently for this for years. Anyone who knows me or has followed my career will know that I have great respect for my peers and that I am an advocate for all members of the of the community. I am under NDA and I'm not at liberty to speak. Regarding this situation, my reputation speaks for itself. Jennifer Hale is probably one of the most popular voice actresses in the industry. Um, so this opens up now like another like potential angle. Like maybe they wanted the namesake. They wanted the name. They wanted Jennifer Hale's name on the product as the voice actress. And maybe Helena Taylor's name was just not really worth the, you know, I mean, it's like, oh, this is lowball her. And then maybe she doesn't take the job or she doesn't take it. And then great, we could just go ahead and get uh, uh, Jennifer Hale. Or if she does take it, it's such a low ball price. 
then it's kind of worth it. We keep the original voice actress and all that shit. So that is a potential. That's definitely a potential. Her IMDb basically shows her only uh, video game voices Bayonetta with a couple roles of TV and additional voices. Yeah. Like I said, she's a, she's a stage actress. So I don't know how busy her stage actress life is. Uh, if I recall in Japan, there is role protection unlike the US and UK. So they might get paid less, but they can't be replaced unless both parties are in the agreement. Ooh. Um, so, so. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the uh, uh, Hideki Kamiya, who apparently is like the biggest racist fucking asshole. Um, and like if he was stateside, if he what the fuck are you listening to me? If he was stateside, like his shit would have been canceled like that. But, you know, racism in Japan is pretty like, OK, <laughs> so uh, uh, he's just going off. He's going off about um because everyone's going to him like, hey, why don't you pay? Why don't you pay your voice actors? Pay your voice voice people. And he's basically going off and he's saying sad and deplorable about the attitude of untruth. That's what I can tell now. By the way, beware of my rules. So the rules, massive xenophobia. Xenophobia is a really nice way of saying racist. Um, <laughs> so the rules that he says that he has is right here in his pinned tweet. It says, really fed up with insects, which never read my posts, header pick, and just keep posting. That's why I'm telling you to not post to me in other la in language other than Japanese. If you break the rules, that means you are a brainless insect and will be blocked immediately. Be careful. So apparently calling somebody an insect is like a pretty, that's a pretty bad, like, you know, it's pretty bad, you know, to say to somebody. Um, but, you know, he's saying say right here, repeat for insects, repeat for insects. I keep saying that I block foreign language posts, of course, including English for a while. That lures lots of insects to block. Very funny to see. Repeat for insects. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. What a baby boo boo. Oh, man. Just a big fucking. Yeah. Big fucking baby. Even the fucking boss baby profile picture, man. Guy on social media doesn't want social contact. Yeah. Insects do suck. Um, to be honest, Japan is generally rather xenophobic. They're uh, usually just better at hiding it. Uh, why you hate insects? We're the insects, man. You speak English, you're an insect. Uh, <laughs> he he was getting so much flack and blocking so many people, and people were just like daring him. You know, people were just straight up daring him to block them. Uh, let me see if I have if I have under one of these tweets here. People are just like, you know, bro, it's like cabin. Uh, I, I, yeah, here's a good one. I, I, you could, I don't know, pay your your voice actresses, actors. And it says, you know, 27,900 likes. So it's huge fucking ratio, 4,000 likes. That's how you tell if it's a ratio or not, by the way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, fucking super ratioed over this. Um, and he, I guess he was blocking so many people or something that he ended up getting his account restricted. Is this the right tweet? I don't think this is the right tweet. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he Blocked so many people, his account got restricted or some shit. Um, this tweet was pretty good. It says, um, what happens when he gets clapped back in Japanese? Yeah, I saw somebody, somebody, somebody clapped back in Japanese. It's pretty good. Is he new to the internet? As if this threat would stop you from daring him. Oh, yeah. He just probably thinks that he could just block everybody. It says, Hideka Kamiya, uh, uh, Kamiya is now blocking people that are questioning why Platinum Games decided to disrespect the value and uh, whatever I've learned as voice actor for Bay as Bayonetta. His funny act antics is now turning into pure deflection and cowardice from him. Apparently, he's known to kind of be an asshole online, right? And... Previously, it was like, oh, this guy is such a dick, right? But now it's now that we see that it's applied to like a real life scenario. And now it's like, oh, he's just a dick. <laughs> like he's just an actual asshole. Um, I think it's because he was doing doing it via third party app. Oh, maybe, maybe he was blocking a bunch of people with a third party app. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So anyways, his account ended up getting shut down for like temporarily. And um, and, and then, you know, he came back and he, he was like, since uh, what did he say? He said something like since the waves have like calmed or something, uh, he wants to kind of get back on back to his business or into business. Let me see. Getting everyone with the way the waves have calmed down a lot, but I don't want to be accidentally block good people. So please continue to be careful not to tweet me or quote retweet from bow armed phenomenon. Turn on. I don't know what he means by bow armed phenomenon, but uh, um, I'm guessing he means if you speak English. I looked it up. It's like a character, but like, I don't know what that means. Is that some kind of like weird shade or something like that? Um, beware of my rules, insects. So, dude directed Resident Evil 2 in DMC and thinks he's God or something. Yeah, he does. He does kind of have that. Uh, if you go through his list here, he does definitely have that. There was, there was, it's funny. There's another Hideki that I guess was getting, um, was getting some guff from people. Uh, and he comes out. This is Hideki uh, Naga Naganuma, who is the, uh, uh, he made the soundtrack for Jet Set Radio. And so it says, I didn't know. So his, this is his like origin story of this horror deal because people were hitting him up like, hey, what'd you do? Why don't you pay your voice actors? Um, 
He says, I didn't know Mr. Kamiya from the beginning. I didn't dislike him. But I remember tweeting a long time ago when one of his followers asked me if he would like to collaborate with Hideki Naganuma. And he replied, Hideki Naganuma, who? And this is where it all started. <laughs> and then his other one here. Um, it says, do not compare me with Hideki Kamiya. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah <laughs> um always a good day when i open twitch and mike b is on yeah that's right that's right thank you all right so so there have been some updates today so it looks like according to according to platinum games it says that in bloomberg here it says bloomberg says platinum games attempted to rehire helena taylor as bayonetta paying between three to four k per session and it was five sessions and not for the whole game taylor then asked for a six-figure sum and residuals which platinum games declined taylor sticks to her version so there's some screenshots down here and here we go so taylor taylor says uh it says that it's an absolute lie and said platinum was trying to save their ass and the game she says she stood by everything she said in the video i like to put this whole bloody franchise behind me quite frankly and get on with my life in the theater um representative for Platinum games and respond da, da, da. and then it says um uh, yeah hideki kamiya the executive director of bayonetta 3 called taylor's action sad and deplorable in a twitter post i couldn't find that post i don't know if he deleted them or not but he also tweets a lot so um so yeah this this basically turns into and no no listen though this is right here it says vgc corroborates bloomberg's bio Bay 3 report citing its own sources that they wanted to rehire her last summer they wanted to get her in for three to four K per session, fifteen thousand dollars total. A uh, significant increase over her pay in Bayonetta two, and can't confirm the residuals claim. So it has been it has been verified that um, she was offered this amount. Now whether she misunderstood that or I mean misrepresented it on accident or on purpose, I I would hate to think that somebody that somebody would come out and lie about how much you're going to get paid when there's a paper trail, but you never know. Um, she's not doing a very good job of putting it behind her. <laughs> and Hideki isn't making their case any better, honestly. Yeah. So this has really become like, uh, definitely like a, he said, he said, she said thing. So obviously people are going to draw their own conclusions, right? I don't know if the, if the sweet UK lady is the one that's lying to us or if it's, Hideki, who's like kind of like a known asshole. <laughs> but if there's a paper trail that shows that she was made these offers, then you yeah, have to kind of side with that, right? Especially if it's been verified by two different sources. So whether or not we still consider that to be an adequate pay for somebody who's part of a franchise that is not massive. Bayonetta is a big game, but it's not like it's not like huge, huge, like super nice. She's voice voicing like Master Chief or something like that, right? Um Either it's a good spin or it's lost in translation. There, there could have been a miscommunication in translation. There you go. There was meant to say 4,000 a session, but it got translated 4,000 for the entirety. Yeah, it's very possible. Um, very, very possible. I wonder if she misunderstood the offer as 4K overall instead of pre-session. People will lie and, and even if ever caught, even if caught red-handed. I was just trying to plug the stab wound with my knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this, I mean, the... The drama is thick in this one, but at this point, it's just like, well, it seems like we're going to get the game. It's going to be Jennifer Hale. Um, some people are probably going to break out the game. A lot of them probably weren't going to play the game, you know, <laughs> to begin with. Um, and it seems that Helena Taylor is going to just kind of move on with her life and, and put this thing behind her. And that's going to be all she wrote. Um, Bayonetta 2 sold 1.1 1. 1 million copies on Switch. Yeah, see, that's trash. It's good. But I mean, like any major company would be like this trash. Uh, remember when when um, Tomb Raider sold like two and a half million copies and Eidos was Eidos, right? It was like, was like, eh. well, put that one in the dumpster. <laughs> no one's going to boycott over this. Yeah, no one's really going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's going to boycott over this. It, you know, it, it, it's 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 definitely feels like, yes, Hideki is is an asshole. Yes, he's racist um, for sure. Uh and you know she was offered more than what she claimed and but she's saying that that's a lot so maybe it was a miscommunication error maybe again like i said maybe it's an economy mismatch right there's uh, an incompatibility between these two economies where one side is saying what are you talking about that's a lot of big macs and the other side is saying 
what? I could barely afford tea with this. So it's a lot. I, don't know, I should have said something else for like for Japan, but you know, uh, <laughs> uh, no big kind of uh, you try a uh, boy, boycott, boycott Aneta. Possibly people may only know about the first part of the story and be angry about that. And if all it doesn't get resolved fully and widely posted. Yep. By the time the game comes out, no one is going to care anymore. That's right. That's pretty much it. Maybe she's a Karen. Maybe she is a Karen. Maybe she's a Karen. You know, we don't we don't really know for sure. We know that one side is definitely an asshole, right? We know for sure that Hideki is a is a dick. So that part we got down. Now she could also be a Karen. Okay, and we have this clash that's happening here. Before we boycott, think of the hundreds of thousands of developers and support staff that helped make this make this game. Fuck that, man. Sounds different. <laughs> Just because one of them is wrong doesn't mean the other is right. That's true. They could both be wrong. It's true. Yeah, low bald. And um and yeah. <laughs> there are truthful assholes. That's right. So yeah, uh it could be a case of Platinum Games is trying to go for hail. It could be, like I said, economic uh misunderstanding, you know, compatibility issue. But it definitely seems like um, well, it seems like nothing's gonna come of that in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> the game's going to release and everyone's going to just play it. Everything's going to be fine. Um, what was that one point? Was it 1.4 million copies in the release? It's not, isn't that bad. I don't know if they put out the, uh, put out the Wii U sales volume. She's English and she'd be a Catherine. <laughs> so moving on, we've had some other, we've had some other drama that popped up over the weekend. Um, I hate to describe it as that because it's pretty, it's, I mean, it's pretty serious. And so, with that, let me preface this with trigger warning. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, spousal uh, abuse, uh, relationship, whatever. Basically, yeah, just big, big trigger. Yeah, don't. <laughs> okay, if you've had spousal issues in the past, spousal abuse in the past, please, 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 please. So, uh, Amaranth. We've talked about it a number of times. We just talked about it in the last episode, as a matter of fact, because she was what? She was being stalked by a whole bunch of people and. You know, across a Twitch con and she couldn't fucking go anywhere without some random weirdo like stalking her with big crazy eyes standing outside trying to get her attention and shit like so she was basically harassed the entire time she was TwitchCon. You know, not the entire time, but a good chunk of it. Um and so yeah, we just talked about her. We've talked about her before when she's uh when she was pioneering the uh hot tub the hot tub section. <laughs> <laughs> A stream pops up with Amaranth, and I'm going to play a good chunk of his clip here so you get the full breadth of this, right? This is Amaranth talking to her husband, who she's kept pretty much under wraps um, because she says she's she's a sex worker. So, you know, if she tells people that she has boyfriend dick at home, they're going to be really upset and she's probably not going to make any money. So listen to this. Why did you say you were going to kill my dogs? Leave the house. Okay, I can leave the, I, you know what? Actually, I don't, I shouldn't leave the house because my dogs are here. We'll take the dogs and leave. You're asking the question I'm telling you and you're interrupting my fucking, uh, like telling you, literally, literally. What are you saying? You just told me you were gonna kill dogs so I didn't do a 24 hour stream. Nope, did not say that. Now you're just fucking being a liar. I'm not I just, said it. I said, I'm going to tell you what I said. In terms of the earlier, are you saying you did not say that? I tried to tell you what I heard from you. And you said you called me a liar. He's cracked out of his skull. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This dude is definitely on fucking drugs. And if he's not, if he's not, if he's not on fucking drugs, then this is a fucking huge problem, right? So. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I said as he proceeds to gaslight her and avoid repeating it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it just goes on. It just goes on. And she's fucking falling apart while she's trying to, like, you know, defend herself. And you hear what, he said, what she said. She said that you said you'd kill my dogs if I didn't do a 24-hour stream. Uh, and so this is, like, this definitely, like, kind of opened things up to be, like, okay. So, like, who is who's, is this person, like, controlling her content and everything? Um, here we go. Like, let's just stream together. Just tell them that we're fucking married. Because it's like, our relationship would be better. We just stream them. And it's a fighting all the time. But no, Mr. I don't, I don't say that because it's going to run the business model. It's not time yet. Blah, blah, blah. It's 
Fuck yourself. I'm done with it. I'm not gonna fuck you anymore. Piece of shit. Yeah, so in case in case that didn't come through, she basically said that uh, he wanted to keep it quiet because because he didn't want her to uh, he didn't want to hurt the business model, right? Like I said, she's a sex worker, so if she says that she's happily married to somebody, that could re- actually negatively affect her business. Now, it's him that's saying this, okay? Um, that's not normal person behavior. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, there was uh, obviously this is like this opened the door to a lot of people having some pretty strong opinions about what they think is really happening behind the scene. Because obviously it can't be spousal abuse if it's Amaranth, right? This has to be a ploy to get some more clicks or something, right? Oh, maybe subs must be down or whatever. And so we had a huge collection of just like of people who are just fucking shitty. Um, and just like, so why was all of this on the live stream? She couldn't have turned off the stream to talk to him in private. But why does she need to film it? Well, who says this isn't uh, who says this isn't being done for publicity? Why would you do this on a public stream instead of in private? The reason this ba- this thing baffles me for two different reasons, to be honest, this dude and how he entertains himself, his audience from suffering from other people. Why does she and other streamers handle those private businesses in public where uh, where is the bare minimum for private life? Where we got left. Um, it reminds me of the last days of August 6th part po- podcast. See, it's not time yet. That's telling. He promised, promised that they will, and he's been lying to her always. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, are you, is anybody surprised that we have like shitty people on the internet saying shitty things? Right? Like this is this is this is the internet, right? This is what we expect, unfortunately. Um, but in a case like this, and she says abuse should be a private matter, obviously, but evidence equals pleadings, whatever. Um, shitty things, shitter net. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, stuff like this like maybe she felt like she just couldn't get away from it you know maybe maybe uh behind the scenes stuff just really wasn't working you know sweet anita everybody everybody comes out and support everybody comes out and support um i mean sweet anita of course we'd expect her to say something uh to speak out against this uh she says men don't unfollow female streamers when they get a partner because they thought they had a chance to date her. They unfollow because jealousy saps the entertainment out of watching someone you fancy. They compare themselves to her partner and feel rejected on some level. You can't exploit or abuse a man by keeping your relationship to yourself. You have a right to privacy. I hope that women of Twitch know this despite the noise. You can't rob men of of uh, you can't rob men a boob point. The sub was voluntary. You can't buy your solitude if you never offered it. Um, so she goes on to talk about it. basically everybody starts coming out and speaking out and trying to like, you know, words some try to help kind of frame this a little bit better and also to quell some of the shitty takes. Um, This came off as a cry for help, not publicity. Yeah, but some people, they don't recognize that. They don't see, they don't see that, you know, that part of it. They just think that everything that certain people do must be like some kind of catch, must be some kind of um, like, oh, what's, what's the angle here? What's the whatever? Uh, And so, yeah, this, this was, it was a very I mean, Jesus Christ. It, it seemed very obvious that it was that it was abuse, right? It seemed very obvious by the fucking call. <laughs> by his own words, it sounded pretty strongly like fucking abuse. Um, problem is people don't see her as a person with real issues, so it must be a stunt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so this is, what, is, what I pulled this link? Uh, oh yeah, so this was, this was uh, uh, um, basically some kind of side story here to kind of corroborate what was happening with uh, uh, behind the scenes. And I know some of you guys know some of this, what's happening here, what's going to happen. So again, let's just wait, let, let you two, let the people who don't know, we're going to get there. Uh, but this was, um, damn, I gave it away already. This was their top mod. <laughs> and it's, uh, and uh, he says, does it make sense now why I had to stream on Kate's channel all day Saturday at TwitchCon? If you don't know, Kate is Amarath's real name. Uh, say also for our skeptics, here's a picture of Amarath locked out of her hotel and the 911 call I made while he was yelling at her on Monday morning, 6 a.m. PST. So, you know, he, they had called security or something. I don't know what happened, but there was basically an issue that was happening at uh, TwitchCon and he felt like he needed to escalate and call 911. Um, now, now this is this is at TwitchCon, right? We would have known if 911 was called because everybody there is streaming. So we would have known for sure. So 911, sorry, we would have known if, if the police showed up. 100% we would have known if the police showed up and that didn't happen. Um, see, even even what she said in the stream yesterday was textbooks. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
Let me see. Uh, let's see, Animal Contact. Yeah, so so we basically went to Mars, uh, the real Mars bar here for updates. And this was an update here, a latest update on Kay Amaranth. People on the team were able to talk to her and says she's fine. Police went multiple times. It's 5 a.m. yesterday. She says she's okay, so you can't do much. She's been all day talking to her husband to sort things out. Not sure what else we can do right now. Um, and it was just like, oh, yeah, then she went live. And then she went live. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Yeah, then she, no, she went live probably right before this actually and the stream ended kind of funky uh which kind of freaked a lot of people out take Hello. a listen to this uh i haven't gotten any calls what are you talking about why would you ask if i'm taking Why would you ask if I'm taking my meds? And then the, the stream just ends. So that was three days ago. That was oh, wow, 364,000 views. People saw that and they were like, that was the end. <laughs> Somebody behind a door asking why you're not taking your meds. Uh, this this was dug up. Thank you, Wilby, for grabbing this. I don't know when this was posted. Uh, was this posted during this whole thing or was it prior to this? Uh, nine days ago. This was prior to this. So this is uh, Amaranth talking about having a five-year plan. This is like one of those things where it's like hindsight's 2020, right? Somebody's out looking at some of the old clips, and here's her at TwitchCon talking about, uh, talking about one of these booths here. You got more artists, more artists. Check them out. Chad says, why are Twitch streams so fake? It's not fake. I actually got I partnered under creative because I used to make cosplays on Twitch. And I used to paint a lot too on Twitch. Oh, but you know, they didn't get the views. So we switched to being a whore. And uh, you know, that actually is a great business model, to be honest. And when I retire, I can make as much art as I want. So just to, just to go ahead and just uh, uh, add some text here. What she's saying is that Prior to doing uh, some of the more scandalous stuff that she does on Twitch, she was an artist, and that was at bringing the views. So she says, "We decided." On Twitch, and I used to paint a lot too on Twitch, but you know they didn't get the views. So we switched to being a whore. Which again, if in, in without this context, we would just think, "Oh, just Amber just talking about we switched to being a whore." You know, just kind of like, "Oh yeah, what well, makes money?" You know. Now that we have this context that maybe she's been put up to this, right? Maybe she's being told that this is what she has to do in order to make money. She's kind of addressing it here without really even thinking about it. She's just saying we decided that that was what's best for her, basically. It's sad. Yeah, it's sad when you look at this now, um, like through a new lens, right? So she she tried to go live and then that live stream ended. I actually still have that. No, don't end up. I had that screenshot open, but um, try to go live. And then during the stream, we watched it yesterday, uh, during the stream, uh, it just said, you know, coming up soon or whatever, starting soon. And then it says, someone call the cost be later. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, be back later. And that was like, that was it. So everybody was now on the edge of our seats. Like, holy shit, the cost being called. Um, but that just seemed like, that just seemed like normal. You know, somebody's trying to like do something to help her or whatever. Right. And overstepping. Um, she has been doxxed. So she does have a um, um, uh, she does have her address out there. So people do know where she lives. But yeah, it's sad. Just sad. Uh, she did go live again. And I do have a, my summary that I wrote up. I watched uh, some of it yesterday. Um, my summary that I wrote up for that was that uh, she left her husband it didn't sound very permanent at first. At first, she, she said she left her husband and that she was going to be seeking um, uh, seeking therapy. She said that she showed him the VOD and she said, I think that's the first time that he's heard himself because I've always tried to tell him what he sounds like and he doesn't want to try to hear it from me. But now that he hears this, he's going to go get help. And to me, that like that was just like fucking red alert everywhere. It's like, oh, shit. So he's going to go and get help. And then you guys are going to stay together, which is like, it's none of my business. But, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know if that's the best decision, you know, textbook. Yeah, textbook. So uh, it sounds like, yeah. So she did say that she's got control over her socials. It was a very strange um, stream. It was a very strange stream because she definitely felt she definitely seemed out of it. She'd been crying constantly. 
Uh, also, there's a lot of relief that she had in her voice. You know, um, she keeps talking about how the future is going to be OK. She's going to change up content when she comes back. She is, here's this clip here from last night. And I don't have to wear cleavage every day. I can wear clothes. Repeat. And I don't have to wear cleavage every day. I can wear clothes. Master has given Dobby a sock. Dobby is free. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Man, you know, I mean, uh, even 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 myself, right? A little bit of self reflection here. Like, uh, I know that I have given her shit for some of the stuff that she's done in the past, and like, if it comes out that like she was just basically a puppet because she was told by an abusive a husband that she has to do all this stuff in order to continue to, you know, or or what or else, I guess I don't know, like. Fuck, man. Like, I feel fucking terrible that I partook, I partook in some of that hate. You know, I did, you know, big time, big time. Um, this was Amaranth. Like, I never I never followed her before, but I'm too cynical to process this recent shit. I mean, don't be cynical, man. This is real. Like, this is real, real shit. You know, I mean, here's some text here. I get to flick out there. And then... So, yeah, let's pause it here. This is like this is she's showing the phone to the to the um, uh, to the, to the stream. It says uh, next time when I say a plan, do it. Dumb fuck. Do you understand what plan you talk about? Fuck you. Whatever. I'm calling you like. Yeah. And apparently it like goes on and on. It's just don't care. Uh, it's the last chance. I'm about to dump your luggage. I'm throwing your stupid merch off the balcony, proceeding to ditch your stuff. You don't need to make up. Uh, you don't need the makeup or the or the live you or the clothes guy, whatever. Deleting socials media in one one month, one minute. Buying options that expire and blasting the cash. I'm about to shut down the real work bank account too, just to just to give insta give it. Rage typing so hard. She's meant to looking into illegal options as well as therapy for herself. Yes, she did mention that. Um, she did mention all that, that she's looking into getting therapy. She was like, oh my God, I'm going to need a lot of therapy for all this stuff. Um, uh, Gasser, this is not, this is, this is not fake. This is this, if anything, this hurts her business in the long run. So no, there's no benefit. There's absolutely negative benefit to doing all this and faking it. Um, and the most cynical thing I've heard was that she did this in order to get out of that is industry. Like she didn't want to do it anymore. And so she found a way to basically get out of the industry. Um, and I think that's probably the most cynical take and kind of the most fucked up that you could have against somebody who uh, clearly is exhibiting signs of having an abusive, uh, being an abusive relationship. Uh, and so she retweeted this actually. Uh, so we could go ahead and say, this is something that she approves of. She says, putting it simply, Amaranth needs help from her husband. Like, help from like to get away from uh amrat's husband is a piece of shit for threatening her dogs and her livelihood motherfucker probably doesn't have to do a hard day's work thanks to her keemstar has been a piece of shit we already knew that part uh she got her financial accounts yeah she got her got her, all of her accounts she got all of her social stuff and everything back i guess so she could manage all that stuff herself um uh, she might lose some followers for moving away from loose stuff but she'll probably gain ones that aren't there just for booze yeah for sure you know there's um a friend of mine who uh who uh keeps more tabs on this stuff said that they noticed that she never even though she lives in close close proximity to a lot of the austin streamers she's only ever gone over there like once and like she's such a big streamer like she should be interacting a lot more with some of these other known streamers um and she doesn't now that could just be a personal thing but i think that might also be like because it was that would be stuff that's out of control of this person right uh of the of the husband uh now i mean she says she's gonna take a contact break and come back but now she's she's live right now as a matter of fact i grabbed this clip in case she wasn't live but you know she's just now she's got fucking horses i mean she's out here i mean i'm, I'm not saying that she all of a sudden has horses i'm just saying like she's outside she's doing stuff i think she's probably on a trip right now probably uh walking around with the horses or something yeah I'm so sorry. um yeah going horseback riding doing normal stuff you know she's out touching grass she's out touching grass that's right every external content connection is a risk of business to the business model no way he let her do that yeah exactly no way he let her do that because like he doesn't have that kind of control whenever and also also it's possible that by letting her go out and um look at this wholesome shit letting her go out and interact with other streamers could potentially expose this this setup that he has and so he doesn't want to, he doesn't want that to happen. So yeah, I, I think, I think almost without a doubt that 
I mean, I, I don't have I have no doubt. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have no doubt that she is in a, an abusive relationship. Um, and what she chooses to do with it is is her own, you know, is her own. But uh, hopefully it's something that she can get away from and, you know, build another life doing whatever. It's not like it's not like she's broke. OK, I mean, bitch got horses. All right. <laughs> it's not like she's broke or she's going broke. OK, she probably has a good amount of money. And also she has longevity too. She's going to switch things up, try to do different things. I mean, that's going to open up a whole new world for her. Um, uh, one random polite. No, God. Uh, there's no question about that dude uh, being an absolute douchebag. needs to fuck off. Yeah. Horses are expensive to take care of. Usually people with horses are broke because of the horses. <laughs> yeah. And she has more than one. I don't know how many she has. Right, look at it. So, uh, yeah. So it, it's a uh, fucking crazy. I, I, I'm glad that, I mean, she had to go live in order to do this. Um, I haven't seen any like um, kickback. For, she has 22,000 people watching that, by the way. Um, she did hang out at the OT counts for some, but it was probably with him since there was lewd stuff from it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like it was a once. It was like one time, though, right? Uh, she collided with quite a few streamers. I don't want to pitch it as a Miko anymore. I wonder if they had to sign an NDA to work with her at her house. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um. The, is, 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 is the dogs okay yes the dogs are okay yeah the dogs are fine the dogs are fine I mean yeah that was the that was you know probably a threat that he made often just saying you know I'm gonna kill your dogs uh, unless you do a 24 hour stream like I'm sure that probably wasn't a an uncommon statement from an abuser but um Amrath is smart and she's been making millions of dollars per month for a while now that she's controlled her finance she needs to do need, need she doesn't need to do anything she doesn't want to yeah and she probably should get like a proper business manager like making your so uh your business manager is like I mean that's a huge gamble man that's a huge fucking gamble like I wouldn't do that you know I understand that sometimes you're in a position where you feel like you need to have a family member step in because you can't afford to maybe get like a real one or something but man once once you start getting like financial discussions with the business and you start mixing mixing that with like your interpersonal relationship issues that you might have right nah dude never do business with family regardless of how close you are yeah don't shit where you eat yeah I wonder if he actually did dump the money he claimed he was going to probably not it's most most of these guys are just all talk you probably think he's gonna get a cut from it right so he doesn't want to jeopardize that uh, and also, yeah, I mean, if the cops are involved in all that stuff and legal and everything's involved, he probably is probably in a position where he's like, fuck, I can't do it now. Um, Lion has had a comment about that, too. Oh, about him making your family, making your family business people. Yeah, Jen wanted to be my business person for a long time. And I was I kind of danced around it. I just didn't feel comfortable with it. Uh, but now now that I've been doing this for so for so long, now I understand why a, a better understanding of why I didn't want to do it. Um she can sleep for more than eight hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been saying a lot of that. So, so, uh, yeah, hopefully this is something that, um, that she could kind of get away from and just be herself, whatever that is. Maybe, maybe herself is really not like, you know, dressing up a scantily clad shit and jumping into a hot tub and, you know, uh, uh turning into a fucking raisin, a human raisin for 19 hours a day, <laughs> uh, or doing 24 hour streams or wearing shit. That's like crushing her titties up to her throat. Um, yeah yeah what's divorce settlements in texas like oh she gets to keep all her money in texas can't she just shoot him or something like that isn't there like some kind of weird thing with texas you can just shoot people uh <laughs> 50 50 without extenuating circumstances there you go i wonder if i wonder if that yeah if those circumstances can be adjusted or can adjust that or that rate because if it does show that she is by far the breadwinner and he is an abuser you know maybe uh, I would hate to see where I would hate to see a situation where he ends up getting uh, alimony from her because that's very possible. Right. It's it's it happens all the time. Um, whereas the breadwinner for somebody who um, maybe does not work and he could probably make a case saying, well, I didn't have to work. I just managed this. And now that I'm not managing that, you're effectively putting me out of a job. Um, now all of this, all of this like abuse and everything, if there's not already an existing paper trail, then that might be difficult to like put into court and say, well, we shouldn't give him alimony because he's an abuser. Well, there's no records of abuse. The court's probably going to treat it the same way the internet is, right? <laughs> there's no records of abuse. There's no all this stuff. And so he might end up getting fucking alimony. Uh, is that way if you may have kids? I generally don't know. No, you could get, if you're, if you're a significant other who, um, 
If you're partnered to somebody who is a breadwinner and you were effectively early, early retired or or working for them or something like that, then you could qualify for alimony. Absolutely. Um, I know for a fact that you can <laughs> see uh, she might finally be able to work on the art she cared about before all this was forced upon her. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking lawyers, man. Don't get it. Yeah. Moving on. Speaking of shitty, shitty everything. Fuck. What the hell? Where's my mom? What happened to my what happened to my water? I was supposed to have some water. What the heck? I'm sipping on, I'm sipping on this. I sent a nice letter too. Mm. Ignored. I know. Straight down was like, he high. <laughs> I haven't smoked anything today. All right. I'm definitely not smoking anything today until I sell this car. And then when I sell the car, then I'm going to smoke. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate a little bit, you know? Uh, breaking news. Black news water. Life giver denied request. I brought you into this world. I could take you out. That's what this the, the text back says. People who are watching the stream, uh, watching this on YouTube have no idea. <laughs> you got to be here for the live, man. All right. Moving on. So this is... Um, uh, yeah, yeah, another shitty situation elsewhere on the internet. Uh, this one is something that was dug up from Rooster Teeth. So some of you guys probably heard of this one. Uh, or you didn't because nobody's really paid attention to Rooster Teeth um, for a while now, I feel like. I mean, we, the, only time, the only thing we get from Rooster Teeth is basically stories about how bad things were at Rooster Teeth. Almost as if they don't exist anymore. Uh, and here's a situation. Rooster who? This is Caden. Uh, Caden Jensen. Caden Jensen was an editor. Uh, for Rooster Teeth uh, back in 2013 for a number of years. And um, the re the internet is just a relentless poonado of sadness. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. More Rooster Teeth shooting themselves in the chest. <laughs> Not even the foot. <laughs> just go right for it. Go right for it. Uh, yeah, Red vs. Blue. Yeah, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with Rooster Teeth, Rooster Teeth is were the creators of uh, Red vs. Blue. That whole series. That's these guys. Uh, also, RWBY. I don't know if that's pronounced Ruby or anything, but it was an anime produced by them, and as well as a ton of other shows. There was Achievement Hunter that, that was out for a long time. Massively popular. Um, just, just, it's pronounced Ruby. Thank you. Um, just tons and tons and tons and tons of content like easily some of like considered some of the pioneers of uh of modern uh modern content on the internet for sure um cockbite studios ended up being a fitting name for them so this this uh twit longer here basically details uh Caden's experience at um uh at rooster teeth starting with being addressed as uh as essentially the f word right so if you don't know what that is it's the other f word okay all right all right all right so he was addressed as it says it says uh within a couple weeks whatever i was given a nickname the nickname was a slur uh see so came into work it was called this but they could not use that name in content so when anyone was recording uh i was called fugs instead so that was their way of basically saying this. Um, he goes on to further just just like give a perfectly like uh, uh, believable and totally like something that happens uh, 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 explanation of what life was like editing where he would just come in and fucking edit, 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 get no fucking thanks. He'd be in there for hours upon hours upon hours over time just just working his ass off and then when he was said it's a uh, but a longtime member of the company looked at me as i was being handed my small bonus it was 100 bucks this is why do you get a bonus you've only been for five minutes now some of this a lot of this you can look at and you it's funny if you read this whole thing which i suggest that you do uh if you read this whole thing it's like oh yeah that sounds like those guys <laughs> it's like oh yeah for that time period, 2013, 2014, that's definitely those guys for sure. And at the time, uh, Herb went on his. Oh, sorry. I, you know, I never looked. I never looked to see what the gender was. Sorry. Um, uh, it was an infuriating. Yeah, it's a total infuriating read. Uh, Rusty is known for overworking and never paying interns, but promising them uh, clout, a chance to be hired down the road. Exactly. Uh, I mean, that's not that's not too too different from um, any other like 
any other uh, uh, content creation position, you know, where they just want to pay you the bare minimum if they can uh, and hope that you just produce. Because then once you're done producing or you leave to go somewhere else, they can just go grab somebody else and pay them the same amount. It says right here, it says uh, desperate for one last for a last minute person. I was in, I went entirely uncredited for anything I wrote for them and I was pushed to add. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I was never given the producer position in that department. I was never allowed even near the podcast unless they were desperate for a last minute person. Woo! That sounds like any studio, though. Yeah, but it shouldn't be these guys. You know, like this is these guys put themselves out there as kind of like, oh man, this is like your friends. This is like your high school friends. They made it big. They're making funny videos. You know, it's like this is the stuff that, and then it turns out they really are like your high school friends. <laughs> and they really are pretty fucking shitty. But at the time, you just thought like, oh man, one of us is making it. That's what it felt like watching Rooster Teeth stuff. It's like, oh, these guys are making it. That's great. You know? And say that uh, these fuckers drove LeVar Burton's daughter, um, Mika, to suicidal thoughts when she worked for them. So fuck these guys. Oh, I didn't know about that, but that's well, we don't, we don't pile anything else on here. This is already bad enough. So, uh, so this may started making the runs, the rounds, uh, and uh, Gavin came, Gavin had his own response. Everybody had a response, right? Gavin Free had his own response. He says, Today, Caden continued a very important conversation that I referred to vaguely in the past, and, and rather than tweet something vague or just attempt to push forward, today I want to stop and take full responsibility for my past behavior at Rooster Teeth. Firstly, I don't want anything I say to be construed as an excuse. There simply was an excuse for my past behavior. In the past, I certainly played a role in other people's unhappiness with my shit attempts at humor. I look back on these moments with disgust in myself. I'm actually shocked at what I used to think I could pass as comedy or just joking around. And he goes on, he's talking about, he says, basically, I was a shitbag. I did shitbag things. Um, and I mean, I hate to put Gavin Free on blast here because I know there's other examples of this elsewhere, but just so you guys know, it is true that they were calling him Fugs. Uh, and here it is right here. It's like, hey, where's Minecraft Fugs? So this is Gavin Free. You know, this is 2015. The tweet's been relete, uh, deleted now, but I mean, it, it's just to add some more credence to the story. It's like, yeah, it's true. And he's coming out saying, yeah, I was a piece of shit. Uh, Michael Jones, who's the one that I thought for sure, I was like, oh, this is the biggest shit bag. Uh, absolutely. Because he was just a loose fucking cannon. Michael Jones was. Um, Micah left during, uh, is it Micah or Mika? But yeah, uh, uh, left due to racism. Jesus. Uh, so Michael Jones goes on. And you know, like reading his, his, everybody has basically the same the same response everybody has the same jeff jeff ramsey has basically the same response um everybody has the same response uh and i would say that you know a reading michaels i was like damn like okay like i i appreciate the way that he had kind of articulated this it's still still it's the same thing though still the same thing you know he uh uh he took part or at the very least he did not stand up for caden uh when uh when she was being slandered or not slander, but being uh, abused like this. Uh, Rooster Teeth also had a... Oh, Kate's response to Michael's comment. Oh, shit. Okay, hold on. Uh, Michael, you are so honest. Open your apology to me. I don't believe in ending people for mistakes they made in their teens, early 20s. You messed up a lot. A lot of us made mistakes. You've grown and done better for yourself and others. I forgave you then. I forgive you now. Oh, that makes you feel good. <laughs> It makes me feel good. I mean, like, it makes me feel good to see that she is at least like, you know, because we hear, like, oh, I talk on almost all of these. It's like I talked to this person already about this, um, but it's nice that Caden at least, you know, kind of at least verified that end because I want to believe that some of these guys really, truly are apologetic for this. And they have apologized for things that they've done. Right. Um, because they recognize that these are issues, um, but it's good to at least have. You know that uh, we did something bad, but we never would have apologized for it if somebody would have had an out us out of us. No, in every case here, almost every case, they say that they've already told you yeah, a few years ago. I reached out to Kaden to tell her how sorry I was and how bad I felt and that I never intended to inflict the harm that I clearly did. Kaden was kind enough to respond uh, when they didn't have to and had and have a conversation with me. So, yeah, all of them basically say the same thing. They talked to her before. Um, and yeah, so, so at least uh, to at least the achievement hunter branch has made steps to actually change, and you can see it, it to some extent. It makes me wonder if this is why Ray Brown left them uh, to be an independent streamer. The rest of the company is still full of bigoted bullshit. Um, oh, it related to the uh, achievement hunter. Yeah, uh, a lot of this happened several years ago, and I've uh, and they have talked or tried to fix this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's do it does seem like, and again, they all could say it, but at least getting some kind of feedback from Caden is 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 great. It makes me feel better, anyways. You know. Like I like I matter. Uh, this is Rooster Teeth statement. Frankly, I didn't read it. I didn't read it. What what are they gonna say here that is gonna make this any better? What are they gonna say here that is not gonna be that's gonna be different from what anybody else said? 
You know, it's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even read it. Who cares? Um, I, I, the, the rooster teeth that I knew and loved and I showed off my collection of rooster teeth signed memorabilia, memorabilia, which I have a lot of, um, is, uh, uh, you know, that's, those are the times I will remember for sure, but not, I mean, and even then it's kind of like, fuck. meanwhile, here's Caden in the backyard, the, in the back room locked somewhere fucking editing while these things are being released. Uh, two pages of words on white background of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. We abused exploit prison for years, make profit deal with it. We're sorry. Yeah. Lawyer words, really badly worded PR shit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's why I didn't even bother reading. I'll re I read Michael Jones and I read Gavin's and I read, uh, Jeff Ramsey's. Uh, response my and all of them pretty much say the same thing uh pretty much say the same thing um i wonder if Caden actually responded to anybody else mm, i don't know i don't i mean Caden doesn't have to like go around and like do a reverse apology tour or anything like that or a forgiveness tour um <laughs> or anything like that <laughs> oh, jesus <laughs> excuse me um she called bs on jeff oh man i mean like I'm again, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that any of those guys have partaken that, you know, again, because I liked them originally because I felt like these were the kinds of dudes that I would, I hung out with in high school. I mean, I not necessarily like them, but, uh, but still it was like, it was like, they were my age and I felt like, Oh cool. Like these guys are making it. And that was, that was my whole thing. It was like, they're funny and all that. They're touching on comedy that I appreciate. Um, but you know, especially when you see them on their on their podcast and they're speaking a little more freely, uh, that's when you realize it's like, ah, oh, these guys, you know, these guys are kind of dickheads, you know, they can be anyways. Oh, so Gus Sarola said something too, huh? What did he say? I'm not going to read this shit. No, I'm kidding. Uh, let me see. Oh, I'm um, sorry, Caden. Uh, I've always thought of you as a friend and feel like I have really let you down. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Did Caden like this? <laughs> you just don't think that people that you are capable uh yeah yeah you don't think that people yeah exactly you think that you're a good judge of character right like every i think all of us think that we're like good judges of character um and and like i try to maintain like at least some kind of open mind with like yes this was a period of time where people did shitty things but they've changed and again like the michael jones thing right like michael jones you know Caden was like, you know, thank you. You're a general good person, all that good stuff. Uh, and he was the most loose cannon of all loose cannons on that team. So I fully expected him to be the biggest asshole. Um, it's a shit show in all directions in the Rooster Teeth subreddit. Oh, God. Uh, why do you think you hang out here? Good judge of character. Well, you just everybody thinks that they are right. I mean, you think it's like, yeah, I know people. And then you find out that you don't. And it's like, damn, or at least you didn't at the time. You know, at least you didn't at the time. It's like, oh, that person did all the shitty things at that time. It's like, damn, I had no idea. Um, a <laughs> good judge of character. Yeah, man, we're all really good judge of characters here, right? There are a few creators that I've liked in the past that turned out to be shitty people. It's really disheartening. You better not be a shitty person. I mean, like, I know I've done shitty things. I know I've done shitty things. Um, but not like, I don't think I ever, I, I've never really done anything out of like meanness, you know? Like, not like meanness or spite. Yeah, it's definitely like, uh, I would say some, I can't think of any scenario here, but I'm pretty sure any kind of shitty things I've done has kind of just been like, not necessarily like at, at a person, you know, like I'm sure there's some BFF reports out there where I've done some shit, especially with titties. Oh yeah. Which I probably would do now, but uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's like the sliders and titties and everything. Um, somebody came in today. Somebody came in today and said, uh, 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 Eon, Ion, uh, fuck it, whatever. It's Korean. Which is something I would never say now. Um, definitely would never say now. That's that was my opening line. One of my opening lines to my Ion um, uh, unbiased review that I did back in like 2008 or some shit, uh, 2009. And so it's like that stuff like that. It's like you know I said it at the time, and I was like fuck it, like eh, I don't need to know how to say this, right? I was very just very dismissive of it, and that was like little things like that. And I know I've got other things out there for sure. I have thousands of hours of video, but you know. Uh, if, it, if it was anything that was like really, really bad by today's standards, and I'm sure somebody would dug it up, but in the future, I'm sure probably something will come up. Something that I said that maybe is okay today, but you know, not in 10 years. So harsh on Final Fantasy. Yeah, there's apparently more. There's more. Is this the response to the uh, tweet? Oh, here we go. There is video online of me. Um... Uh, at age 19, 15 years ago, using an awful slur. I've apologized publicly before. I'd like to apologize again as I've used to be. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. 
So, okay, so yeah, there's this come out and study something when you're 15 years old, when you're 19 years old. 15 years ago. Jesus Christ. Everyone's been shitty, knowingly or unknowingly, to someone at some point. Hopefully, we learn better. Be right back, collect receipts on mic. Yeah, collect them, man. Collect them so I can, I can make apologies on all these things. Uh, I'm still upset with you for that. Wait, wait. I bought the game based on your video and can't get my money or time back. Wait, which one? <laughs> which one, Traven? <laughs> all right, Final Fantasy? <laughs> All right, hey, we got some more shitty news though. Fuck. <laughs> How long is this episode? Every time. Oh, we're at an hour. These episodes are going long. Man, we got a lot of shit to cover. All right, this is a, this one. This is one I really, 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 really want to cover though. I really want to cover this one because um, shitty news Tuesday. <laughs> long news is fun. <laughs> so, what is up with like Valorant, man? I feel like Valorant. There's always all this drama surrounding Valorant. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this is Rising Hope, which is a Valorant team. Uh, Rising Hope came out. This is October 5th. And they said today, today we say goodbye to our Valorant lineup. They have done a great job and we thank them for their time. Simmons and this guy remain in the organization and will take part in the formation of a new lineup. Um, <laughs> people still play Valorant. Lots of people still play Valorant. Be careful. <laughs> you gonna get clapped back hard. Valorant needs to catch up to the CSGO drama numbers. Yeah, uh, they can escape the shit people. Yeah, so so uh, so Valorant, uh, October 5th, they ended up letting go of their entire lineup of their Valorant division. Uh, and it was an, uh, apparently this was an all, this was an all female or all women's uh, team or something like that. And then they made another post. Uh, let's see, this one was uh, October 3rd. This is prior to this, actually. It says, we are delighted to announce the launch of a new Rising University. What we offer, professional coach, employee assistance. They're obviously looking for people to, to sign up. Uh, and then they follow that up with, uh, P.S., this time we are only recruiting men. And it's like, wow, weird, weird, weird stuff there. Um, and then we go over to um, the real story. Wait, so they're looking for only men and they let go of all their women? Like, what's going on? That's kind of weird. And so the real story, you hear an alarm. <laughs> Days ago, an entire female Valorant team and the head coach for Rising Hope left the org unanimously on account of another coach showing the team his penis live on Discord. I'm going to read this to you. For the sake of transparency, this is what happened at Rising Hope. Uh, Rising Hope. I, as the head coach, along with the players, unanimously voted to leave Rising Hope uh, because of the trauma that Simmons gave us, or Simons gave us. Uh, a week prior to Elite, we would hold daily training and scrims after the discussion and planning of strategy. Simmons would uh, speak out randomly, would just speak out randomly and say, hey, uh, hey, way, call me, uh, call me and show me your dick. He would say this, this around three times. It may be an internal joke to them or something, but since I am a coach of female players, I found it inappropriate, so I called him out telling him that it wasn't a good joke. Uh, it says the initial 15 minutes were all good. They were on mute while watching the games. After some time, Simons would, uh, would speak out in Russian while other players were in game and they had a hard time listening to footsteps and concentrating. So I would call out Sim Simons to mute his microphone, but he didn't stop and would continue to speak. After this, he said, way, call me and show me your dick. I called him out again, saying that it wasn't funny and to go on mute. A few minutes later, he switched his camera on and showed his penis. Being that the players were all on dual monitors, they were the first to see it and got shocked. I have a single monitor, so I don't know what happened. The players left the Discord and I was wondering what happened. I transferred to our Discord and asked them what happened and they told me how Simmons showed his penis right in front of the camera. Oh, hi, Mom. You just saw my message? It was a beautifully written. It was so good. Oh, you gonna knock over my shit on the way out? <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> anyway, so this guy shows his penis on camera. <laughs> not only am I talking loud, but the speakers are on too, okay? So it's not like she didn't hear that. <laughs> <That's sick. laughs> so <laughs> I don't have any follow up to this, right? Yeah, this is, this is a collection here. Oh yeah, statement to Simmons. I, I forgot, I didn't talk about this part yet. Statement on Simmons that we very much regret that such an action was taken by one of our members, owner. Uh, we want to make clear that we did not receive enough information uh, as some members of the organization withheld it from general management, which also is Simons. Uh, we would therefore like to inform you that Simons is no longer a member of our organization, probably still owner. Uh, everyone involved in this incident has been fined and we apologize to our former players and the entire community. Um, Oh, God. 
<laughs> she knows that dicks are no big deal. <laughs> Mike, Mike lives in his mom's basement. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so, so, I mean, yeah, probably an organization that's probably going to dissolve at some point because uh, it sounds like Simons is part of upper management, probably. Uh, and so because of that, probably not going to be part of the probably not going to have an organization anymore. But still shitty people doing shitty things, man. Shitty people doing shitty things. Um, how do you find the owner? I mean, look what happened with uh, uh, that that dude was hanging out with uh, Tate. Was well, a couple weeks ago we covered that story, and that guy came out. No one's no one tells me who I can hang out with, and then like he ended up getting fired or like removed from the uh, as own from ownership or anything. Carlos, fucking Carlos, <laughs> you could say on oh, the dick move. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh man speaking of uh, uh, speaking of uh, speaking of speaking of G4 I almost forgot to add this story so we'll just kind of touch on it a little bit G4 is closing down again alright <laughs> uh, I feel bad though because I mean some people found out this way Right? They say, hey, the sweeties I found out I lost my job. How neat. Gerard, the completionist. So this team, as you know, G4 was reintroduced last year to tap into the popularity of gaming. We invested to create the new G4 as an online and TV destination for fans to be entertained, be inspired, and connect with gaming content. Over the past several months, we worked hard to generate that interest in G4, but viewership is low and the network has not achieved sustainable financial results. This is certainly not what we hoped for. And as a result, we have made the very difficult decision to discontinue G4's operations effectively immediately. I know it's disappointing news and we and I'm disappointed too. I want to thank you and everyone one on the G4 team for the hard work comment on a commitment to the network. Uh, this is my shocked face. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So no more, uh, no more, uh, no more G4 again. Um, annoying how there's no date or time on the email. Was it leaked early? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know, but I mean, it's October 16th. So that's when it made, made it to us. Uh, yeah, man, G4 going down again. I mean, like, can we at least get some cops reruns or something like that? <laughs> it's not surprising. It's not surprising. There's no place. We talked about it when G4 was first being announced to come back. Like, it, there's not really a place for this kind of content anymore. You know, like there's not having like an entire network dedicated to shows like that are produced shows didn't work in 2012 and 2013. Having it happen in 2022 when everybody is looking for a quick shitter like, you know, clip or something like that, like it's not going to work today. Absolutely not. It needed to be ran by Twitch streamers. And even then, even though who are you going to find a stream on it that's popular enough to bring people in, but also like wanting to dedicate time to develop that brand. That was a problem that I had working with Zam and um, uh, and Game Breaker. It was like, I still wanted to do my own thing, but it was hard because of, you know, being pulled on all, all, all sides. Um that's the way it seems to work with these show based kind of grouping creators. Yes. OK, so and that's that's a thing. If we look at like OTK, for example, right, that's a good example. It's like where they always do stuff together. Right? Not always, but they do a lot of stuff together. Uh, and that group content really helps because they're all big streamers and they're all in that together. It's owned by them. Right. It's their brand. It's their stuff. So they all have a piece of it that they want to, to want to make happen. Uh, G4, like I didn't know a single person outside of like P uh, Pereira. He was on that, right? Pere Pereira. Uh, I mean, he was on, but like, I, I mean, it, it, who else was on the relaunch? I don't even know because it, it didn't have like a handful of people that I was used to seeing, I guess. And I didn't watch a lot of G4 to begin with, but still. Um, circle clout. Yeah, circle clout. But I mean, if the circle's too small, then, mm. so, oh, Sessler was on there too. That's right. Sessler was on there too for a minute. Um, there is actually a really good take here. DJ Wee, um, he goes, he says, I spoke extensively on stream about Venn and G4 TV in September when the original layouts happened. If you want to know why it happened, here's a comprehensive breakdown here. It is comprehensive. It's probably about a 45 minute listen. It's a, it's basically a clip to his, uh, to his VOD here. I'll throw this in chat so you guys can watch this or something after the stream if you want to. Um, but uh, yeah, he does. He goes and he talks about Ven. This is an old. This is an old clip too. This is an old. Um, when is this from? Let me see. I think one of the stories he's talking about is, is pretty old. Uh, that's last live four days ago. Last month. Last month. So yeah, he goes on. He's talking about uh, um, the G four 
uh, layoffs. He talks about, I mean, he goes off and he just basically discusses his involvement with another company called Venn, which is very similar to G4 TV at the time uh, and how that went under. And one of his biggest things was like the takeaway should be that people that have money tend to spend money frivolously on things, like business owners, right? Especially in this industry. Uh, they just spend money to spend money instead of trying to be clever with it, be smart with it and try to like target groups. They just think if they're spending money or they're earning money, then that's the be all end all. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good listen. Uh, he frames it pretty nicely and he kind of just the way he uh, breaks everything down. Bigger series make their own big game show type things that seem to be more popular. Yeah, I mean, that's true. And it's very organic. And that's the thing. It's like you have companies that are like trying to get a piece of that pie. But, you know, we don't operate on that anymore. Right. We're not operating off like big companies, you know, unless it's like a company like literally comprised of like our favorite streamers, you know. It's just not something that we give a shit about anymore. You come out with some new, oh yeah, G4 TV or Ven or any other company is coming in uh, to to take a you know take a bite out of this um, you know this money that everybody's earning. It's like no one cares. Like, no one's gonna watch your shit just because what? Just because you're a big company you got money? No one fucking cares. Uh, it's the content that people care about. Um, jeez. <laughs> uh, moving on. This is actually this is actually kind of the end here. Uh, I wanted to play this clip. I wanted to play this clip because I thought it was just, just fucking hilarious. So I don't know if you guys know who Matt Walsh is. I barely knew who this person was. He is a uh, kind of conservative, like a religious fanatical conservative type guy or something. But he kind of comes across as like a Dave Shapiro type. Anyways, he um, he makes a comment during a live stream that was making the rounds. I think you guys would probably appreciate it. Uh oh. Yeah. Um. What's your opinion on anime? It's really popular amongst teens and young adults. I think it's all satanic. I have no argument for it. I have no argument for why it's satanic. It just seems that way to me. All anime to me seems weird, just like bizarre, creepy. Um, and in general, I don't think that adults should be, whether it's anime or any other kind of cartoon, uh, with, with, with rare exception, adults really shouldn't be watching cartoons in general, I would say. I mean, just 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 so you get an idea, some of this guy's other takes, right? Here's him talking about uh, dudes crying. Not cry in public. It is unmanly and dishonorable. Rare exceptions can be made to this rule, but we make far too many exceptions. And the exceptions are pretty obvious. A loved one dies, your child is born, your bride is walking down the aisle at your wedding. In the latter two cases, a, a dignified tear or two may be acceptable, but please don't turn the faucet on. Okay? There's, there's no reason to go overboard. Don't try to prove a point. Other exceptions can be imagined. We, we've talked about some of them before. Perhaps, for example, you're saying goodbye to your family before embarking on a three-year voyage to Mars. Three Maybe you're watching back. the end of the movie Rudy. Aside from those rare occurrences, the point is that men should comport themselves with a certain level of stoicism and dignity, learning to control their emotions and projecting an image of strength of someone who is composed and in control. <laughs> you you could probably let out, you could probably let out too, but don't let me don't let me catch you slipping. Let me catch you. I'll give you a reason to cry. That's some shit that like my dad would say. I'll give you a reason to cry. You know, <laughs> squeeze out a tear or drink it into Jesus. Yeah, now we're gonna afford therapy. I know his face is like a magnet for hands. <laughs> oh yeah! Wow, what a what a fucking weird take. And so, so he does this. He does this take on anime, right? I mean, obviously this guy is full of fucking takes. Okay, he does this take on anime, and then later, and then later he starts getting shit on by everybody, and he's and he starts to he starts to. To clap back a little bit. He thinks he is anyways. He says, I want to apologize for singling out anime. I actually think all cartoons are satanic, especially Paw Patrol. The girl from The Exorcist used anime, and then the next thing you know, she was crawling around upside down on the ceiling. You guys need to learn your history. <laughs> uh, and he's like, he's like, I have to admit, I'm sort of flattered that I can riff for 35 seconds about anime and it generates actual news headlines. It's a depressing statement about the news media, but I still enjoy it. And then he says, are you kidding? Is it sarcasm? I swear I can't tell anymore. Claiming anime is satanic. I'm never kidding. Uh, so I'm catching some heat because I said the anime is satanic. I just want to clarify that. Yes, I was. I, it, was it will literally lead to demonic possession in upwards of 87% of cases studies show. Uh, and you know what it's doing? It seems like to me, and I, and I have another the other image here that will kind of corroborate this too, uh, is that it's like whenever you get busted for saying something stupid and you try to make a joke out of it, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm totally serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I like this. It says, Matt Wash had an all-day copium meltdown because he discovered that a lot of his fans are big anime fans. <laughs> he hates the horny, yeah. Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's douchebag, a guy who says offensive things and decides whether he's kidding or not based on people's reactions. Yeah, that's that's it right there. That's, that's the stuff. Jeez. <laughs> You know, the second guy who's uh, kind of like the Andrew Tate guy. Yeah, all this sad, toxic. Yeah, all this really sad, like, like why why should I have to regulate? Why should I have to worry about regulating my emotions whenever I'm sad? You know, like, if I'm sad or if I'm emotional, like, I should be able... I fight tears. Yeah, I fight But I shouldn't feel like I have to fight tears in order to maintain some certain level of stoicness or manhood or whatever. Like, give me a fucking break, dude. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my fucking God. Internet rules. Don't bash anime, K-pop, Sakuno. They'll come after you. They will. Every time. Dude's beard looks like a prosthetic. <laughs> uh, that uh, The Amaranth clip made me teary-eyed. You know, because I'm a person. Yeah, because I'm a person. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, yeah, it's just... It's just a weird stance to, to take and be like, you can't cry because you're a man. And it's like, dude, come on. I mean, he's got a lot of other weird takes, a lot of other weird fucking takes. But this one was just fucking hilarious. Anyways, that's it for the news. Thank you, chat, for hanging out. Appreciate you. Cody says, I bring a is not satanic. It's a collective emotional trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix has 55 more games to develop. No, no, but that's a value add. They don't want people to pay for it just to, they don't want people to go and just think that Netflix is a destination for games. They want it to be a thing that you could just do because you feel like playing a game. That's what the statement they said about developing their own games. Anyways, it's okay to cry now that the news is over. That's right. It's okay. You could cry. I know now why you cry, but it is something I could never do. Thank you, Chad, for joining me today. Thank you, everybody else, for watching. I'm going to come back into a second chat and close things out.